Good afternoon, everyone. More than a million monarch butterflies froze to death in Mexico last week. This is the area, 19 degrees north latitude. At least a million and a half, possibly more. Now that I've been able to gather all the social media updates, check out the temperatures that actually occurred during that time, minus three at 19 degrees north latitude. These are some of the amazing photos coming through as that snowstorm pelted the entire country. And here's one of my favorite, the blue agave covered in snow. You don't see that every day. At the same time in the United States over the last week, week and a half, where they've had these incredible deluge rainstorms, tornadoes out of season weather. This was related to it because there's been an anti-cyclone and this low dropping of the Arctic spinning moisture north off the Gulf of Mexico into the United States. But what happened in and around northern, southern, and central Mexico, incredible snowstorms at 19 degrees north latitude, which had an effect on the monarch butterfly population. We all know the lovely monarchs. This is what it looked like. This is El Rosario, the nature reserve where there's millions and millions, possibly up to 9, 10 million that congregate during the season. But this is what happened when the snowstorms blew through. Extreme cold temperatures killed off millions and millions of these butterflies. The red dot on the map is the location of the butterfly reserve. Coming across, I just did a social media sweep to see what the aftermath was of this. You can see the density of the snow around the area, El Rosario. Not used to getting snow, definitely not this late in the year. And even during the regular parts of the year, even in the winter, it's never usually snowing down there. And this is the accumulation that occurred this year. That is not flurries. That is definitely deep accumulation. Bit closer view for you here. So the temperatures in that area got to 12 below zero. You know, those are wintertime temperatures that you would experience in Europe, not in southern Mexico in March, way into spring at 19 degrees north latitude, tropical area no less, further south than Cuba. Yet we're told this is supposed to be normal. Now carefully look at this picture of the butterfly frozen. That's not normal. A, the moisture content and the humidity in the air was incredibly high to get this kind of frost on the butterfly. And B, you'd think all huddled together like bees do, they create their own warmth, yet this many of them died? They even closed the park down so nobody would see what actually happened inside. After there were so many dead butterflies, they closed it. They sighted because there were 80 mile an hour winds that knocked down some trees. You know, if it's on a trail, I can hop over a tree. Why did the park get completely closed off for days and days and days while they cleaned up all the dead butterflies? Were there more than a million and a half that died? So the number will actually be undisclosed because we really just don't know how many it is. More image from social media. These are all off Twitter. Tex-Mex, great job. Jump over there. You can see the weather in Mexico. They run down and they're also connected with several other accounts where they do rundowns of the day. As you can see, this is heavy snow here in the foot plus accumulation levels. Unheard of, absolutely unheard of, except the people back in the 1850s writing accounts about how much it snowed back then. Especially when they were trying to transport prisoners through the desert. They talk about these incredible snowstorms in the 1850s, 1840s that dropped feet of snow at a time. Now this looks like a repeating pattern. Haven't had anything like this in a hundred years plus, and then suddenly it's starting to drop feet of snow again. That's very similar to the recorded accounts back in the 1830s, 1840s, and 1850s. And you'll start to see all the way from Chihuahua sweeping through Mexico, except on the coastal areas down near Oaxaca. Everything else was pelted with snow and like this sleety ice. And you can see what it looks like right here on the mining equipment. Sonora. This is the depth. Like I said, Chihuahua. This is my favorite here. But this is what the snow coverage is on that crop. That is not normal. They should not be getting this much snow, even in the middle of winter, let alone borderline into late spring. You can see the size of the flakes coming down there. Now don't just look at the mountain picture. Go to the right side and take a look as well. More pictures of the agave and a few other areas. That's heavy snow density in the mountains. 3,000 feet high, that's it. Again, in that same area, mountainous road conditions, driving around. At the same time, Sierra Nevada Mountains, California, receiving four to five feet of snow. And in that entire 
seven day period, they received 11.7 feet of snow in a single week. On Mammoth Mountain, one time snow drop four feet. That's in the exact same snowstorm that swept through Mexico. Now notice the happy skiers, but go right down to where it says they do not expect the snow to melt until the first weeks of July. So the skiers can keep skiing up in until July. This is the anti-cyclone that I was telling you about. This is the reason there was so much pressure and so much rain pulled up into the United States. The A is going anti-clockwise. The B is going clockwise. So it's making like those cogs that you see in wheels. It's pushing everything right down the center of that. That's why there was so much flooding, tornado, thunderstorms, etc. Yet on the back side of it, it pulled down all that cold weather right into Mexico. Now you're going to see more and more of these atmospheric mix-ups and disturbances as the magnetosphere decreases. And we started getting into these wavy patterns. You're going to see more of this. All-time record floods all through the areas that you see in the orange and yellow there. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Please remember to pass this through your social media. Share all these butterfly stories. This is an amazing story here. That's really not getting very much mainstream press coverage. You think that at least 2 million butterflies dying would be on Nature Magazine's front cover. If it was because of heat. It would be on the front cover, but it's because of cold buried under the rug. You just won't hear about it unless you pass it to your friends and other people and they can learn about it as well.